wife of noble character, who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the dice staff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She walks over and watches over the affairs of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do not do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is pleasing. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the glory she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Now, I know this is a little lengthy, but I have the footnotes here that I thought was worthy of reading. These verses describe the ideal wife and mother. Her whole life is centered around the reverent fear of God, compassion for those in need, and faithfulness and love towards her family. All the ideals set forth here will probably not be fulfilled in any one wife and mother. But each wife can seek and serve God and her family and others with the ability and material resources that God has given them. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day bestowed upon us. Be with each and every one of us. May your love shine through us. Bless each mother here today. May she be a shining example to all around her. If you have a mother here, hug her and kiss her and tell her you love her. If not, call her tell her you love her. And if you're not able to do any one of these, turn your eyes to Christ and look up in heaven and say, I love you, Mama. Again, thank you, Lord. May we Leave this place with your love shining through us. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand and worship together.
Mother's Day, but it's also um, a concert prayer, and that's just taking intentional time to just worship God and praise Him. Um, you know, back in the day, concert prayers were just when they when they saw a need, they just would pray until God met that need. And we probably won't do that today. I'm going to let you out to have some time with your families. But I just wanted to start our concert prayer with just getting rid of all the, the thoughts in our head and just focusing on why we're here and why we're alive. We come to church to worship Jesus. We come to church because we want him to know that he's important to us. We take this time out just to bow down at the King of Kings' feet and say, God, you're important to me. You are great, and I love you. And this is what we're doing this morning. Just, I see heaven filling this place because I see heaven's people here. And the next song is just, your great name, God, you are so good. So we're just going to keep uh, praising. And I worship through song a lot, so there's going to be a lot of songs. If you don't want to stand for them, you're welcome to sit. Um, but, um, yeah, a little great where you get tired there. <laughs> you know, that tiny body. But, um, so let's just, just enter into his presence with me.
you've given us sunshine, and we thank you that you've given us another morning to wake up um, with your blessings all around us. I pray you would clear our heads and our hearts of distraction, and just let us enter into your presence today with our brothers and sisters. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I was thinking that's something that we all have in common with each other. We all have a mother, so uh, we have that uh, besides uh, the Lord that we, that we uh, have. So I'm so thankful for my mother that that uh, taught me in an early age to, to love the Lord. And uh, I might not be here today, but wasn't for uh, her influence on, on my life. So I uh, would like to honor the, the uh, mothers today with a little gift. So Greg and Dave and Don, you come come up and uh, pass out these gifts. At this time, uh, let's prepare to uh, bring our offerings to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your love for us and, and for your care for us and, and for providing all that we need. Lord, as we uh, get back to you, uh, according to that which you've given to, to us, we ask that you receive it back from us that as, a, as our gift to you, and that as a congregation we will uh, be able to use it wisely uh, to uh, support the, the uh, ministries that, that uh, we are engaged in, uh, both uh, on this corner and around the world. We, we just thank you for for uh, your, your again for your provision for us and, and for our congregation. Just praise you for this offering in Jesus' name. I think I heard this song like four or five years ago. It was the first Mother's Day I ever had to do as like the worship person. Uh, so it's old. Thank you. 
typically suck. I get nothing. Do I have to say words? I saw this rock and it says mom on it. So last year was my wife's first Mother's Day and uh, I thought it would be romantic if I let him choose the gift. Yeah. It doesn't just say mom. It says wow. So wow, you're an awesome mom. Aww. I said like I want to be treated like a princess for once. I don't want to be treated like the house wench. And this is what I got. I'm a big girl, but this is like a size Toyota. So when I gave her a box that had six different plastic spatulas in it, uh, she was she was less than enthusiastic. <laughs> my baby was born maybe like three weeks before Mother's Day, and so I guess my husband wasn't quite prepared. So I got this card. It, it's not even a Mother's Day card. I think I forget Mother's Day every single year. I open up the present and it's a bottle of Trim Spa. And I look at him and he's like, isn't that the face cream that you love from the spa? And I said, no, these are diet pills. My granddaughter decided that I needed a hat. I've never worn a hat. It's her mother's day and he decides to make lemon meringue pie, but she hates lemons. Yeah, but they were Meyer lemons. My father and my sister and myself all pitched in and got my mom a mug. I was in labor for two days. And for what? Like, put some thought into what you're getting me. That's it, just a mug from three people. The big surprise was a pizza party. Oh, did I, there was a bounce house on the front lawn and you just, you should never have a bounce house on Mother's Day. Like, you shouldn't, it shouldn't even be legal to inflate a bounce house. Like, if someone goes to inflate a bounce house on Mother's Day, it should, it should be, the bounce house should be like, I'm sorry, I can't work today. He got me a Mother's Day gift, um, which is great, but I'm, I'm not a mother, so, you know. I was like, I can make you a mother, you know? But uh, this year I'm gonna make up for it. Uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him touch the object, but I'm actually gonna make the decision myself. <laughs> Mother's Day can be tough, I think, for some people. So um, we're going to have the first person we're going to have, uh, like I said, it's constant prayer, but it's also about moms. And so I wanted to have some actual mothers talk a little bit today. I am not a mom, even though I'm a lady. Um, so this, the next uh, person to speak is a brand new mom. So my sister Joy, come on and share with us. Well, good morning again, and happy Mother's Day. Um, Thank you. It's a very exciting one for me. <laughs> I have to say first, usually when I'm up here, I'm hiding behind the drums or, you know, a character in a, a skit or something, so I'm quite nervous, so bear with me. But I'm sure that God can use me even when I bumble. So, <laughs> um, I think most of you know that five months ago, actually from tomorrow, I gave birth to the most perfect little girl. <laughs> um, and as a new mom, of course, I like, that. <laughs> I like to brag about her as much as I can. But I think being a parent is one of those crazy things that absolutely nothing can, can uh, prepare you for. It's kind of trial and error, and eventually you figure things out. Luckily, we've all survived. 
But in the last five months, I have learned a ton. So today, I'm going to share with you five things I've learned in the past five months. Um, this isn't just for the moms. I, I, I don't feel equipped or, you know, right trying to share parenting advice with you. So these aren't parenting tips. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the first thing I learned is that I am capable of much more than I could have ever imagined. And that's the same same to be true for you guys as well. I'm often reminded of the verse, um, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can function on no sleep for days, weeks, months on end. And I'm capable of so much more than that. And I want you all to know that you are capable of so much more than you imagine as well. The next thing I learned is that time flies. Uh, Chevy and I often sit there and say, oh, I can't wait until... And we have to stop ourselves because this season of our lives, this season of your lives, is right now. It's going to be gone faster than you know it, no matter what you're doing. Uh, so just enjoy today, embrace it, celebrate it, because it will be gone faster than you know. Um, the next thing I learned is that God's plan may be different than mine, but it's also way better. It doesn't mean that it's easy, but in his plan is where we find fulfillment and joy and peace, and that's awesome. Um, okay, I guess I should have practiced a little more pulling myself together. Um, but I never, I wasn't the type that planned on getting married and having kids and so on, but I'm so glad that that's what God had in store for me, and I'm happy that that's where he has me now. Whew, okay. <laughs> but that often reminds me of um, Jeremiah 29, 11, which is, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord's plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And it's awesome that in his will, he prospers us. He wants us to have hope and a future. The next thing I learned is to welcome God into your day every day, no matter what. Amen. Welcome Him into the diaper changes, the dirty bottles, the business <coughs> meetings, the cubicle, the office, the, the morning commute, the bike ride, into your life, no matter what your life holds. Welcome Him in, him in because He wants to be there with you. He wants to share life with you. And finally, and I think my favorite thing that I've learned in the past five months, and the first thing I think I learned about was unconditional love. In the, in the midst of labor, the worst pain of my entire life, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine loving the person that I was about to meet. But then, you know, I saw her, and I was ecstatic because she looked at me as her as her mom. And I can only imagine that that's a little piece of how God feels about us. He's ecstatic when we look to him as our father. His love is so amazing. It's overpowering, it's consuming, it's unconditional. And that's that's crazy. We can't even fathom it. The love I feel for, you know, my child, the love you feel for people that you know, for your children or whatever your situation is, is only a tiny, tiny glimpse of what God, what God's love is like towards you. And I think, I think often we're like the, the crying infant at 2 a.m. or the bratty toddler or the, the pushing the limits teenager or the, the rebellious 20-something. We're, we're hard to love, but God still loves us in that moment. In those times, whenever we're, we're struggling or whatever we're doing, God still loves us. So look to him as your father. So my prayer for you this morning is that you explore all the things you are capable of, because you are capable of much more than you can imagine. Enjoy each day. Embrace God's plan for your life. Enlist God to be a part of your day and examine God's crazy, consuming, unconditional love for you. Be enthralled and encompassed in it. Uh, just take some time if you want to get in uh, pairs of two or three or just by yourself.
Um, just, we're going to take a moment just to pray for um, young women of the world, young mothers, um, young, you know, like young mothers with young kids, and that's uh, young college students, just the young mothers of the world trying to find their place. Um, and we're just going to take a moment to just pray for those, uh, those women. And, uh, and then we'll join in song together. We just want to pray and lift up the young women of the world. I pray for the young mothers who are struggling to get through their days, who are, are covered in food and barf, and I just pray that you would give them energy and joy today. I pray for the young women who always thought that they would be married with kids and who haven't yet. I pray that you give them joy and peace in the life that you have given them. I thank you so much that um, you love us um, so much more than you could ever imagine. I thank you so much for the young moms who are just doing their best every day. Um, I just pray that you give them strength and the Lord just let them feel your presence every day.
And now we're going to have a more experienced mother uh, share with us a little bit. Hi. Um, I was joking with um, Hope when she asked me, she said, well, the young mother, and then there's the old mother. <laughs> so I guess I'm the old mother. Um, experience mother, so I'm better than you. So um, when Hope first asked me to talk a little bit about being a mother, the good times, the bad times, what God's been teaching me through it all, I thought, well, what could I say? I don't have any great words of wisdom. What qualifies me to talk? But I decided to focus on what God has been teaching me through this process. And I can at least speak about that. Parenting has been a spiritual growth experience for me. Through the various challenges as a parent, the main thing that I've learned, one of the main things at least, is to rely on God, to really trust Him. There's so much that's beyond my control as a parent. Our natural tendency, not only in parenting, but in life in general, is to want to be in control. I may be able to control my own life, my own actions to some extent, but I can't control another person, even my own child. I may be able to influence them, but I cannot really control them, and I cannot control whether bad things might happen to them. If something bad happens to me, I can deal with it. But it's much harder to deal with something bad happening to my child, and I really have no control over that. I could and did try to minimize the risk, but I could not protect my child from everything bad that might have happened to them. And once I realized that and accepted that, I learned my only choice was to trust the Lord to take care of them. Trust that He loved them even more than I did, and that He knew what was best for them, and He would take care of them. I'd like to add that that also carries over with other people in your lives as well. As I was taking care of my mother and when she was elderly, um, things would happen I thought were horrible. And I just learned that I had to trust him, um, that he loved mom more than I did. And he knew what was best for her. And he did take care of her. And so I learned to pray. I learned to pray for my children. I prayed for their safety when they were young. And even more when they started driving and staying out late at night. Um, I prayed that they would make wise decisions in social relationships, in schoolwork when they were young. Then later, the romantic relationships. I pray for their salvation. I continue to pray for their spiritual growth. So I guess I would say one of the main lessons the Lord has taught me through parenting is to trust Him and really rely on Him, uh, no matter what. And this is a lesson that can carry over into other areas of my life as well. Um, I mentioned when I was caring for my mother and then the other situation was when I was dealing with breast cancer. I just had to trust the Lord knew, and He would take care of me. There's another aspect in which um, I have grown spiritually through parenting, through being a mom. Um, most of you know that I have three wonderful children. Okay, you might not know they're wonderful, but I do. Um, I'm richly blessed in that regard. What many of you may not know is that although I have three children, I did have five pregnancies. Um, with every pregnancy, I experienced what the doctors would refer to as a threatened miscarriage. Um, the first time, I was young and naive and didn't know. And Figured that was just the way things were. Um, started having some problems, saw the doctor, put me in the bedrooms for a while. Finally, she said, okay, never mind. It's, you know, if you're going to miscarry, you're going to miscarry, so get up and do whatever you want. And that pregnancy, uh, Carrie determined that my daughter was born. And so, um, and that was 
wonderful, it was delightful. Next time, I said, okay, time to have another baby. So I got pregnant again. And started having some problems again. I thought, well, I've been through this before. Eh, no problem, it'll be okay. And it wasn't to be. And I miscarried my second pregnancy. Doctor says, well, things like this happen. You know, you don't know why, it just happens. Um, you'll be fine. Give me a pregnant again. So I said, okay. And I uh, went ahead and I got pregnant again. And um, same thing happened. I miscarried my third pregnancy as well. By this time, now I knew I miscarried pregnancy to term, because I'd done it once with Laura, but two miscarriages in a row were starting to get to me. I said, okay, this is, this is different. Now, this isn't just, well, it happens. Um, got pregnant the fourth time. And again, I started having problems. This time, I was really starting to freak out. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> this is when, probably for the first time in my life, I truly cried out to God. I said, God, I can't do this again. I just can't do it. Um, now back to my notes, because I don't remember what I wrote. I'm totally off script now. <laughs> Um, so I really cried out to God at that point in my life. And I also turned to two trusted friends, two trusted Christian friends, and I, um, I called them, I talked to them on the phone. They talked to me, they prayed with me. And the Lord gave me peace. He didn't promise that I would carry the baby to term. But he did give me peace that whatever happened, it would be all right. As it turned out, I did carry that pregnancy to term, and the result was my wonderful son, Mark, who's been a real blessing in my life. And then I became pregnant one more time. And so, oh, okay, here we go again. And that pregnancy also, I um, carried to term, my son, when was born. I'm clean, keenly aware that not every story has a happy ending as mine did. Although I had the two miscarriages, I had three wonderful children as a result. Um, for many women, motherhood continues to elude them, and I don't want to be insensitive to them. But for me, I was blessed with two delightful boys after my two miscarriages, and I'm very grateful. But I believe that if things had not turned out as they did, I would still have been okay. Because the Lord had given me peace and reassured me that he would be with me, whatever happened. So to sum it up, no matter what parenthood may hold, for the mother who walks with the Lord, it is an experience of spiritual growth. Mothers who have older adult children that comes with a little bit more worry or teenagers. Um, I love that when they came back to, you know, I just learned how to pray. And that's awesome because that is the way um, we are able to communicate with the king of the universe. And so we just get to take a time right now and intentionally just talk to him um, and thank him for the people in our lives who are moms or our aunts or the women in church who mentor us. And just let's just thank him for those things. Um, and then we'll join together in our song.
And Lord, that is not something that's bad. That is such a privilege. Thank you so much that you created us to be servants and to be humble. Lord, you say our beauty comes from a gentle and quiet spirit. And I thank you so much that you created so many women with that. And I pray that we would just remember and thank you that motherhood just reflects you because mothers bring forth life and nurture us just like you would, God. Just like Jesus bowed down to even his disciples and washed their feet, Lord. Let us be ever like you. Let us serve you in the way that Jesus would. Let us serve all those around us because that's what we would do if Jesus was here. Because Jesus lives inside us and that's what he wants us to do, Lord. I pray you would give us servant's hearts. Lord, I pray that we would just live our lives through your power, God. Like, like Joyce said, that we can do all things through you, God. And every day we can pray to you and you can restore us and renew us and give us strength by your Holy Spirit. Let's stand and worship together.
My name is Katie. My name is Courtney Bishop. I'm Rachel Talbot. My name's Haley. My name is Heidi. I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. My name is Missy. Family always comes first. I have a special place in my heart for fluffy animals and helping others. And I am a mother. My name is Lisa. I was a single mother of two children. I have three stepchildren, and I've been a surrogate mother to three. My experience as a mom in all those different unique ways really just comes down to one primary thing. Love. The love of life, giving life, and being a part of life. I am a mother. I've always been adamant that motherhood has very little to do with biology. Being a mother is this ridiculous thing. It's this all-encompassing element that spreads from beyond yourself to your children, your spouse, and even those around you. It is crazy, it's messy, and it's wonderful. My name is Marie. Suzanne. Heidi Kim. Emily Tingley. I'm Genevieve. I probably have cleaned up the same mess four or six times today. I don't know who's counting. I've raised three amazing kids. I have a beautiful daughter named Rosalind who I can hold every single day and a beautiful daughter named Adelaide whose laughter I never got to hear. This is my daughter Daisy. I'm a health nut. I make videos about natural living. I am a mother. And I am a mother. I am a mother. And I am a mother. All of us mothers may have different jobs. I created babyleague.com. I'm a middle school teacher. 911 dispatcher. I'm a public health professional. I served as a United States Marine. I am a work at home mom. I'm a birth doula. I make videos here on YouTube. Hobbies. I lead worship. I'm a wine connoisseur. I love body modification. Cooking, sewing, and lifestyles. I'm a wife to a Marine who is currently deployed in Afghanistan. I'm an American living in Germany. I have a heart for the children of Cambodia. I love Jesus. I'm a Christian. But the one thing that we have in common is that crazy love that we have for our kids. You're always loving, always giving, and always putting your kids first. And sometimes I feel like I lose myself in it. But we lose ourselves in the things that we love. And sometimes when I take a step back, I realize that I also found myself. My daughter Eden just turned one. We actually share a birthday on the exact same day. And she was something that was never planned. It was totally an unexpected surprise, but it was the best gift I could have ever hoped for, and I can't imagine my life without her. I actually lost two beautiful boys before I had Oliver, and it's something that I do not like to remember, but I will never forget it. It'll always be a part of me, and I will always be their mom, too. My name is Ellie. My name is Rose. Sam. Charity. I'm Laura Ellis. My name is Shannon. My name is Samita. My name is Sam. It's Ash. Natalie. I'm Carl the Bubble Ash. My name is Nandy. It doesn't matter whether you've lost a child. We've lost two babies to miscarriage. I lost my son at 31 weeks. We have six babies. Four on earth, two in heaven. Had a child. I have two beautiful young sons. I have three-year-old twin girls adopted or fostered a child. The Lord has given us our beautiful adopted daughter. We're hoping to grow our family by adopting. Are pregnant. I'm pregnant again after a loss. I've been keeping a massive secret. Are expecting twin boys. Or have been trying desperately to get pregnant. I am one in 10 women who struggle with polycystic ovarian syndrome. I've been trying to conceive for five years. And at 23, my husband and I had to do IVF. And together we have beaten infertility twice. You are a mother and don't let anyone tell you differently. I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. And I am a mother. I am a mother. And I'm a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. And I am a mother. I'm a mother. I am a mother. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. I'm honored and blessed to be her mother. I am a mother. I'm a mother. 
am a mother. I am a mother. And I am a mother. I am a mother. And I'm a mother. And I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. So I was reading through um, some things in preparation for Mother's Day, and I came across this open letter from a, a to a pastor from a woman who's not a mom. And I was like, oh, she's like in her 30s. And I was like, oh, this kind of sounds like me. So, and she was uh, talking about how every Mother's Day, they have the mothers stand and we, have to, we acknowledge them. And she was like, that's so embarrassing because I'm not a mom. But, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of right. But also, it's honoring, this is Mother's Day, it's honoring mothers. And my little baby Joy, she, I didn't tell her about this. I was sitting there and she's like, she's like, are you going to have the mothers stand? She was so excited. Because usually on Mother's Day, so let's have the mothers stand and give them a round of applause because it's a hard job. And this is the day we get to acknowledge them. So moms, stand. Let's have so I I I know that's I know that's tough for some people, maybe the people who are, you know, like me and kind of like, I'm not getting married yet. Or the people who, you know, have lost a mom or a child. But it's like, it's just being able to celebrate with those who are celebrating. And today we celebrate the mothers and we celebrate all the things that they give us and, and all the things we learn from them. And I just also want to read this. Um, another part of her letter was acknowledging the wide continuum of mothering. It says, to those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains or purple markers, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't need to make this harder. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, stepmoms, spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you wanted it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision the lavish you love on grandchildren and that dream is not yet to be, we grieve with you. To those who have empty nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expecting and surprising, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. So that's about it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks to all the moms. I'm so glad to see you all here today. Birthdays. Oh, it's birthdays. Happy. <coughs> we have people stand up who had that birthday, or would you? Stand up if you have May birthdays. Okay.